Morning everybody, it's Paul here from Rio Driving School. Um, back in the car this morning uh, for a 6.30 assessment with my friend Matthew again. Um, since our last assessment, Matthew uh, has bought a vehicle. He's been out and about with uh, his new car and he's feeling more confident now. So I'm really, really interested to see how this drive is gonna go. What are your what are your thoughts about today? Um, I think my driving's improved anyway since the last um, the last video. I mean, we've we've had about eight or nine lessons since then, I think. Um, but I, I think especially the last couple of lessons have been really good. So yeah. I'm yeah. just hoping. Do you, as well, yeah. do you have any concerns or any areas in your driving that you feel are weaker that you'd like me to? Uh, take pay, pay more attention to so my, my observations have improved a lot every now and again I will I make the mistake of indicating them looking but I've got a bit better at that now so okay I'd say I need to just be 100% on that why, why is it important to do your mirror checks and then signal what what why do we do it that way around and not signal and then check because you need to know what's behind you. Because you might see something that would cause you to decide not to do it at yeah. all. Yeah, so yeah, we need to assess what's going on down the sides of the car as well as the back uh, and make decisions according to what we see or what we don't see. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so yeah, this morning we're going to get out um, for again for about, what, 30 ish minutes perhaps. Um, do you want me to include a manoeuvre this morning? Can do you? Yeah. Um, they're going to ask you to do some show me tell me questions. I realise you're not overly familiar with where all the bits and pieces are in this car. So I'm not going to worry about that this morning, but I will be talking to you about that later on, alright? Yeah. So let's not worry too much about that. Um, and yeah. I'm excited to see how this one goes this morning, so uh, I'll turn out the lights. Do you want to follow a real test route or something that I'm gonna contort for you? What do you think's best? Um, do you know, if, 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 if I did it, it could be a hell of a lot worse than what you would be looking at I know when when Hannah did her part two driving assessment um, she was expecting it to be a lot more intense than it actually was mm. although she did say that she was holding her breath after she did her maneuver they got her to do a bay park immediately on the car park and when she completed that maneuver the examiner asked her to leave the car park and she just says can I just have a second I need mm. to catch my breath she'd been holding her breath well if you remember right, when I first started driving that's what I was doing wasn't you it? were was holding you were breath. holding your breath yeah yeah and a lot of people do that it's surprising you have to watch very closely and and, and see the body language because the, there's a lot of non-verbal communication going on it's telling me you're comfortable with something or something is stressing you out mm. so yeah it's all good okay then uh, so shall I make this up then this morning yeah, let's do it. okay all right interesting i'm going to turn that out and you'll see uh you, you'll see how uh, matthew's looking this morning there so matthew what i'd like you to do first of all please is turn right okay uh again uh, i know it was the same as last time turn right along this road please first of all just remember it's a national speed limit road you're going on to Really see, it you? is, it's a bit dodgy, so when you do decide to go, you better go. You've got to be dead sure, or you're dead. Not too bad. Very good. What I want you to do is to take the second road on the right. There's two turnings very close together. Okay. So the second turn on the right is 
just by this sign and the tall tree at the back there. Talk to me about your decision there uh, with your signal. It was quite a difficult one because they are on top of each other. They are, aren't they? Yeah. It means if you was to wait until you're at that first one, you'd be braking and then indicating too late. So I'm, I'm a bit torn as to what to do there. You did the right thing. You put your signal on. Uh, that's why I, why I did that. Just you put your signal on and then let the person behind decide which, which right turn you're going to take. The important thing is to warn them that you're going to slow down and take one of them. It's irrelevant really, they're both two side by side isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, don't be afraid, there are a lot of grey areas with driving. Now when you get to the end of the road, will you turn right please? Yeah. How much driving have you managed to do since you've had your car? How long have you had it? And um, I've had it since um, not Sunday just been, but the Sunday before. Um, and I'd say I've done about two and a half, three hours, something okay. like that. But it, it, it's you have to rely on people being available, haven't you, to, to sit in with it? Have these people noticed improvements from one week to the next? Have they said anything or are they quite surprised how far you've come already? Um, I've only driven with them once but they are... I've had no complaints. <laughs> Good. I know, I, 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 like I said, I had a long drive with my mum yesterday to Stoke and back. Um, she said she felt safe, so that's good. <laughs> that's really good. It's a good drive out to, towards Stoke, isn't it? Lots of dual yeah. carriageways. There's a lot of different types of roads, yeah. Can be a bit of annoying though, because on a lot of the roads it does go 40, 50, then 60, then back down to 40, then 50, then 40, then 60. It just goes up and down all the time. Yeah. shops here.
this little thing here. When you can, find a place to pull over. It can be on the right, if you like. Seems to be a little bit clearer, doesn't it? Okay, relax for a minute. So, what, are you, what did you mean by that? I know I made a mistake there. I stopped in the box. Oh, well, I noticed... Well, I, was, I was a bit... I don't... Is it a, a mistake? Well, I was a bit unsure about it because I know you're not supposed to stop in the... Um, Hang the on yellow. a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Let's have a look. Can you find rule 174 in the highway code? So can you see these little blue? Yeah, find rule 174 and read it out for us, please. Uh, box junctions, these have crisscross yellow lines painted on the road. Uh, you must not enter the box until your exit road or lane is clear. However, you may enter the box and wait when you want to turn right and are only stopped from doing so by oncoming traffic or by other vehicles waiting to turn right. At signalled roundabouts, you must not enter the box unless you can cross over it completely without stopping. I didn't make a mistake. He didn't make a mistake. I thought... On, on the approach to that situation, I thought you're hesitating about going in the box, and I, I, I expected you to stop and wait outside of that box. I was going to, yeah. Had you done that, yeah. and especially on your driving test, that would have been a serious fault. Yeah. Um, because you're potentially holding up people behind you who also want to turn right. You're also kind of indirectly suggesting to the people who want to emerge out of that junction that they should bring their car forward mm. so it would have been a problem so why is it why is it okay to wait in the box there but at the traffic lights around the corner where you were a minute or two ago it's definitely not okay to be in that box what is the difference in that those two situations have a think Because the so the, the the box on the just before the lights is is basically opposite a junction, mm -hmm. um, and obviously with the lights being there, if you were to park in there and wait for the for the if the lights was on red, there'd be a big trail of traffic, and then nobody would be able to come out. Whereas there, because there are no lights, you're literally waiting for it to be free, and then you can just go. <laughs> right. So the the let's get this straight. The box junction. Um, around the corner where the traffic lights were, where I asked you to turn right at the traffic lights. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to wait in that box under any circumstances. Um, and the reason is why? Because it's opposite a junction? Or because it is? Um... Well, you'd be making life really, really tricky for everybody, but the book, the highway code specifically states, doesn't it? You may wait in the box if you are waiting to turn right and only prevented from doing so because of oncoming traffic. Right. You cannot complete your turn because there's traffic lights in front of you. Yeah. Uh, more specifically, with that particular junction there, if you are in the box, you're potentially blocking the road on the left from people on the main road who wish to turn, yeah. which would make you look like a right numpty. Everyone's looking at you, making you feel awkward. But also, people who want to emerge out of that junction haven't got a chance in hell of getting out, particularly at peak time. So they've left that clear for them, I believe. Yeah. But anyway, no, it's a learning. It's a learning one. And no, you didn't make a mistake, so well done. Okay. Uh, more luck than judgment, though. But, uh, yeah, now oh, you know. Yeah, now I was going to say, I mean, I was hesitating, but then I looked at it and I was like, nah, shit. You know. Yeah, no, you're okay. You're okay this time. On with the drive. Use a signal and then check. I did. Matthew. <laughs> I thought it was slightly different in that circumstance only because I was stopped, so. Well. Because I wasn't currently moving. So, if there's somebody coming up from behind and you haven't yet seen that because you haven't looked yet, 
If they see your signal, they might think I'm just going to come straight out. So and if they I'll think that, that, what might they do? Slam the brakes on. So you've interfered with their journey. It could be yeah. dangerous, serious fault. So, it, you know, uh, you've got to be a bit careful. As it was, not a problem. So, you know, a driver fault versus a serious fault, depending on if you affected somebody or not. Yeah. Told you I was going to be tricky with you. I'm trying to squeeze the juice out of you now and find out what you know and what you don't know. Get to the end of the road, can you turn left please? taking the gear at the same time yeah. uh, I understand why you did it you got to get the car going but yeah. you can extend that first gear get the wheels straight and then go straight into third if you wish okay um, but yeah we shouldn't really be trying to negotiate a corner or a bend uh, and take a gear at the same time if it means moving that steering wheel Gotta be picky with you now. Yeah. I need to get a bit better as well. So when it goes down from a 40 or a 50 or a 60 down to a 30, mm -hmm. I slow down in time now. Yeah. Um we need to get in the braking just right so I'm not slowing too much down because I tend to be slowing down to about 22. Okay, so you're over braking. Yeah, just a little bit, yeah. What do you think that is? Because I just, I'm just trying to make sure that I am getting below that speed limit in time. Yeah. But when you reach 30, just roll off the brake. Yeah. Just keep it covered if you're on a downhill gradient. Anyway, uh, okay, so a couple of roundabouts coming up. I want you to go left at the first one, please. Yep. Turning left.
getting good at this lovely position there well done okay we'll start getting mean now all right <laughs> at the next roundabout turn left please safe place to pull up on the left please <coughs> lovely drive on when you're ready Talk me through what you're thinking now. I wasn't going to indicate just because I know that car was coming up and if I did, it may have caused him to... Uh... Okay. I didn't check my blind spot. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, check it, check all of it before yeah, you see it. I know, yeah. Is that my fault because I've got you to talk, talk, talk to me? Possibly. I, I tend to make mistakes when I'm when you're asking me a question, but I should just stop, answer the question, and then do it. Yeah, it could do that. job hasn't it? Right. This can be tricky now depending on the volume of traffic involved. At the end of the road turn right. A little bit early on your signal. Yeah. It's because I don't I, I don't know um I've never come out of this road before you see so I didn't know that that wasn't there. My advice to you is to look at the sat nav Well done. I was considering touching the brake for you, then you did it yourself. Well done. Would that have been a minor anyway, just because of it being quite close? Depends if the examiner had to do it for you, it'd be a serious fault. Yeah. Uh, take the next left, please, just by the bus stop here. That's it. Yeah, um, I don't know if you're aware also, you could have been much closer to that junction when you were making a decision about whether or not to emerge. Okay. Uh, I did notice that, I mean, obviously it's not my fault. Like, I, I was already in the, pos uh, the position that I was before I crept forward, but that learner driver did cut it quite a bit. He did, yeah, he did. Yeah, I should have just stopped. Yeah, at but the roundabout turn right. What it was. I didn't actually mean to, it, uh, I wasn't as firm on the brakes as what I thought I was. And then I noticed, so I um, obviously put a bit more pressure. Pick up the signs for Wolverhampton. 
Hampton, please. Thank you, isn't it? Now I know you can read. So what are you going to do? about that. You know me, I, I don't know. I just, I just have a feeling that it wasn't right. Good, it wasn't right. It wasn't right, could have been a problem. Lucky there was no one else there. I'm marking out as a driver fault, so you still haven't done anything seriously wrong yet. Um, what was the problem? The problem was, I think. Well, you tell me. Uh, tell so, you what, at this roundabout, can you turn around at the roundabout, please? Wait, just do do that first, then we'll talk. Yeah. All right. It's awkward. There's nowhere to pull over, really. Would have indicated off the roundabout, but remember, you're telling me, correct me if I'm wrong, that you don't have to. Not on a mini roundabout. So I should have that. Technically, yeah. If it's going to help another road user, yeah. We don't signal off mini roundabouts. And I'll tell you what we're going to do. Uh, just for a moment, and because it's my test and I like to make things awkward. We're going to go on to McDonald's this morning. You can reverse oh, the car into a space. Lovely. Where about the entrance? The entrance. <laughs> mm. Being careful not to wait in the service area. Oh, where am I going now? Oh, you're going around the wrong way as well. I've been really naughty, Paul. <laughs> Does it matter? We're on private property. Try and not kill the bird. Right. This is real world stuff mixed in with your little assessment today, isn't it? You're going to get hungry from time to time, aren't you? Well, there you go. Voila, well done, well done, very nice. Okay, um, breakfast? Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay, we can revisit it, uh, the problem. What it was, I asked you to follow signs to Wolverhampton and you said, oh, I hate doing this. Why do you hate doing this? I don't, I, I really don't know. It's, I think it's because I have to distract myself and look at signs, you know, I don't know. Let me draw your attention to one of these fabulous drawings of mine. We had a situation like this. Something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Something a bit like that. We obviously approach from six o'clock. We ignore the first exit. That is an exit. 
and we go towards the Wolverhampton exit and you'll see that we'll go back there and have another look now but these are exits they denote roads of no significance it might take you to a housing estate it won't take you to the next town or city it might just be a retail park like Sainsbury's or a McDonald's drive through or something like that but it is a road it is an exit we've got to delay our signal to a halfway past that exit because if there is somebody waiting to emerge at that exit they might emerge right in front of you if you put your signal on there as Matthew did as it was there was nobody there so uh, signals timing fault um, but it is a driver fault and not a serious fault it didn't affect well, anybody had, had somebody have been there that would have been serious it could have been potentially a problem yeah yeah, yeah. so we, we will I, I noticed as soon as I sort of I always make mistakes and once I've done them I know exactly what I've done wrong as soon as I've done it yeah like I know I should have waited until halfway past that point before I indicated yeah well i've discovered this morning that you don't like to interpret signs so guess what we're gonna to have to do more of interpret signs. interpret signs that's that's cool i'm glad you should be glad too because it's going to make you a stronger driver anyway let's get out of here follow your exit signs and then we'll be turning left out of the car park we're going to go back and have another look all right go the right way this time <laughs> yeah not much more to go you've done ever so well this morning just, it just, doesn't feel like just it. Li little things. Well, I'm I'm pick, picking you apart now. It's hard to so be. It's hard. Left back to yes, the please. It's it's hard to be perfect. Potentially, you'll get there if you keep gathering all your experience in your car. I always say, if you've got your own vehicle, you're going to potentially do a lot better. Can you follow the signs, Decanic? Look at that sign. Yeah. So how many exits were there? It's the third one. Yeah. How are you going to position the car? On the outside, so on the left. Okay, cool. Let me see it. side mirror check there yeah yeah we're going to be turning right shortly I'll give you a heads up in a minute where they're turning in there I believe it might be um, it's just yes it certainly is where, it's just by the pub here yeah, yeah just by the pub about him oh, I was yeah yeah I didn't like the way he was aggressively approaching I could tell he was slowing down but he was he was approaching quite quick yeah that's why I had my arm on him okay let's um, take it easy up this road have a good look at this sign yeah. we'll zoom in on it for you on the video as well so you can see this so you pro yeah. we're approaching from six o'clock we've got that little stalk on the left that's the first exit and then Wolverhampton is exit number two yeah so we're going to delay our signal, slow things down, keep the car tucked in, halfway past, 
there you go he knows where you're going yeah everybody's happy well done well like I say once I've been past it I'll make the mistake I know I've made the mistake and I know not to do it next time yeah yeah in now another five six minutes and we'll call it today what kind of curveballs can I throw your way now do you think <laughs> I never Re know you. are you ready for another uppercut go on um, at the roundabout turn left Following the road ahead, okay. Good. What are you looking for there? What do you mean, sorry? I saw you checking all oh, your mirrors. Oh, just making there. sure there's still nobody around. That's all. Good. I mean. Yeah, I like it. So many people don't bother checking door mirrors. We know there's someone behind us. I tend but, to quite often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. I just got, don't check be, them sometimes at the right point. Got to be looking for those vulnerable road users, haven't yeah. we? Yeah. Yeah. We know there's bicycles some people. as well. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, there seems to be a lot more bicycles on the road these days. I've found. Unless it's just me because I've only started noticing because I've started driving. Where are we gonna go? Well... Did you know this was out? I did not. It looks to me like we're going to be following the road ahead using the wrong side of the road yeah. in a moment. You knew that. Is it two way or three way? I'm not even clear. Looks like it could be three way because of the... I was going to say it says two and then there's a three upside down. Zooming on that in the video. That's good that is. Yeah. <laughs> I think maybe the wind blew it. It should be say, it should say three. So, as I'm going over, just double check that all. Well, no. I would. Yeah, I, I would anyway, but... I, I would always check, but, yeah. but, but in theory, traffic lights are old and the other two lanes back. Yeah. Always worth checking, though. You can have some mad teenage on an electric scooter coming down, regardless. Now why are they doing that? Why don't they just drive around it properly? I.e. wrong side of the road. Did you know it's illegal to drive on that raised painted area? When I definitely knew it wasn't good, that's why I never yeah, did, but yeah. so many people just go straight over them. Um, let me see. 
traffic lights, turn right please. Just here? Yeah. lesson I think I do check but I need to check a lot more in advance okay frustratingly it's difficult to pull over along here there are no suitable curbs that are uh, haven't been lowered I think. safe place it can be on the left or the right I'm not bothered okay I was on and on about that just standing because of the junction being there, but I know it says just at least 10 metres, isn't it? Mm. Rule 243. Yeah. Do not stop or park within 10 metres or 32 how far, feet. How far do you reckon that would be? 32 foot. Uh, where we are now. Um, well, if you, th if you consider the average car is about four metres long. So... I'd, I'd say there's at least three car lengths in front in front of us, so it's about 16 metres, maybe. We're okay. So what did you think about all that, then? Um, good points, stuff to improve upon. Good few little mistakes, yes. Yeah, so obviously, um, like I said, with the mirror checks, I didn't, you know, the, those ones, I didn't check my blind spot and then indicating at the wrong times as well, for example. So when I indicated before I looked and moved off. Mm -hmm. um, little things, isn't it? Just little, little things. As a whole, the driver in itself, I'd like to say, is really good. Would you have um, passed? I think it depends on the instructor. There's the, I think I, I could have passed just. Okay. Dependent. I like that. Um, I like that you're considering things like this. Um, it would read. I think it would largely be down to um, other road users. Yeah. If there were other road users at that roundabout when yeah. you signalled at the wrong time, that could be a disaster. If there was a road user approaching from behind and you signalled and then checked, that could be a disaster. Yeah. As it was, they were they were not there this morning. So what you, you need to do is get a 6.30am test. Yeah. Uh, or fix it. 
Yeah, yeah. And well, I think you will. I think you'll fix it easily. I think we've just got to keep cracking down on it. Near side mirror checks at roundabouts. So when you are leaving a roundabout, why is it so, so crucial to check over here? What could be going wrong? Somebody could be coming out around you. Yeah. So why have we got to check that before we put a signal on? So if, if, for example, you were checking there was a bike there, yeah, well, you, you wouldn't indicate and turn left. You would just probably go around the roundabout again perfect. and then turn off. Yeah. yeah, perfect, 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 yeah. Good. Vine Island is a classic example of where I, I like to check all my mirrors. Yeah. I want to know what's going on on both sides of the car so that I have an immediate exit strategy if something's going wrong on my left because we're approaching the middle lane typically follow the road ahead at the roundabout use the middle lane is what the examiner might be saying to you so you'd be checking all your mirrors and then straight over to the left side of the roundabout if it's clear if it's not and it's clear on the right you could use lane three follow the road ahead and then get back so from time to time what i may say to you which i think will be an interesting one is matthew when you as sooner or later when you approach one of these roundabouts and ask you to go right or to follow the road ahead i might say to you there's a phantom motorbike in that mirror there and you will know what that means i want you to act as though there's a problem there a real problem there and yeah. deal with it um, without getting stressed out about it of course uh, it's a difficult thing to practice but uh, if we if we pretend like that uh, it'll it'll get you ready and it has happened on driving tests and examiners have been very very pleased at how, typically how um, pupils deal with that when I send them there because uh, it, 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 it makes them nervous as well because if you make a wrong move it's his side of the car that's going to get crunched uh, but yeah all good I'm pleased definite improvements yeah um, yeah let me know what you think uh, in the comments down below uh, and uh, of course um, I'll be back with another um, mock test again soon bye for now